dependent military families, uh, the uh, husbands and wives of the men and women in the military, has begun conducting briefings for dependents. These would be the dependents that are stationed on the near the East Coast, the Atlantic Ocean, near the West Coast, the Pacific Ocean, and near the Gulf Coast. At these briefings, they're being told the following, that there's this planetary-sized object called Nibiru that's coming into our solar system. It's going to be causing very severe problems, much more so than it already is, very soon. And that they're being put on standby to bug out. They're being told that there'll be little notice, possibly two weeks or so, before they're given the notice to bug out. Oh, they're also, by the way, they're being shown a map, Vance. Four to six weeks is probably pretty likely. Probably not more than three or four months. So that's, that's our belief. I hope we're wrong. I hope that uh, this turns out to be a... Uh, incorrect information. If it is, well, that's great. If it's not, if it turns out to be correct, then you've got your heads up. So I asked a question this morning to all of you out there, to the several thousand of you listening to me on the morning of July 11, 2012. What would you do if you had six years to prepare? What would you do if you had six months to prepare? What would you do if you had six weeks to prepare? Mike, it was two weeks ago today that I uh, announced uh, the information I received from two confidential sources. Uh, one was uh, a confidential source who is a dependent of a Department of Defense uh, employee, part of continuity of government contingency planning, by the way. Uh, not all DOD and not all uh, government employees are part of uh, COG, uh, continuity of government contingency planning. Anyway. At this briefing, which was, they had to sign a non-disclosure agreement before the briefing began, they were told that they were putting on, being put on standby for evacuation, that they may get as much as two weeks' notice, they may not, and they started talking to, telling these dependents about Nibiru, Planet X, and how this planetary-sized object was going to uh, cause massive flooding uh, on all coastal areas. Now, the map they were shown is very similar to the map of my DVD. I need to get a copy of that to you, by the way, Mike, if I haven't. And um, that was pretty much it for that, that source. Uh, the second source uh, is in the uh, Department of Homeland Security, and that source basically confirmed what the first source said uh, without uh, going any further on that. And then, then the following day, or the same day, I should say, you came up with uh, your own sources, Mike, and uh, why don't you tell us about those? Well, um, the source that, that first told me about this, and, and I've been doing some digging since then, but the, the, first, the source that first told me about this is a director-level individual for a foreign intelligence agency that I have uh, occasion to speak with uh, now and then. And what I was told, and I was told this probably maybe 60 or 90 days ago, and um, I, I didn't put a lot of credence in it at the time, but as I've uh, researched, I, I have to put more and more credence in it. And, and as a qualifier, I, I have to say this up front that, you know, perhaps this is being floated as disinformation to discredit people and to discredit. So I, I have to give a caveat there. I don't think it is, but it could be just that, that type of effort. But I was told that to be very prepared on the dates of uh, August 17th and the dates of uh, September 26th, that a planet-sized object would be passing its, uh, passing very, very near the Earth. And I was told that the distance, the closest distance would be um, maybe five to 10 Earth diameters. It would come that close. And that we should be on the, uh, be prepared for massive earthquakes, and as a result of those earthquakes, uh, tsunami-level flooding in uh, coastal uh, areas. Now, since that time, I've done some more digging. And I, I spoke with uh, intelligence sources within the U.S. who not only confirmed that, but added some more fuel to the fire. 
And one of the things is that this object is coming in at an extremely high rate of speed. And um, what uh, what the, the, the other concern is, besides just the, the, the near passage, is that as this thing passes through the uh, asteroid belt, it's going to disturb the orbit, the stable orbits of many asteroids that are out there that are orbiting and be like a, uh, a cue ball on a billiard table and send these things going helter-skelter in every direction so that no one knows where they're going to end up and uh, what their ultimate destinations are going to be and that we may be living with after effects of this for a number of years into the future. Absolutely. And uh, then you had a second source, uh, I understand as well. Well, the second source was the one within the U.S. government. There was another, uh, my, my primary source was from a foreign intelligence agency. Right, right. right. Well, uh, the the distance that you described, uh, 10 times the, the, Earth, the Earth is about 24,000 miles in diameter. Um, so uh, 10 times that would only be a quarter million miles. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's about the distance of the moon, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that that's close. And, and uh, I, I've been told that this, the size of this object um, could be as big as, as, as the moon. Could be. Um, it, it's, it is being tracked currently. And the primary tracking station is that large uh, dish in uh, Puerto Rico, I believe it is. So, um, yeah, I'm... I'm um, I'm, I'm trying to learn more and as much as I can, as quickly as I can, because this will affect a lot of people. Now, I also have to tell you, I have been told point blank information that I can't share because I said, I was told if I go on the air with this, that my, my truck's going to blow up with me in it. <laughs> and, uh, okay. you know, uh, and, and mostly what that has to do with the high rate of speed it's traveling at and how it achieved that high rate of speed. Um, you know, the, the, the term slingshot comes to mind. Right, right. So, uh, well, when, when, this, you know, when this thing comes into our solar system, Mike, it, it's, it, it comes out, it's coming from the south, by the way, and as it gets clo deeper into the so our solar system uh, approaching our sun, it picks up speed, uh, does a loop to loop around the speed, around the sun, excuse me, where it slows down and then and then starts picking up speed as it goes back out. Uh, now the size you're describing is not the size I've been hearing for forever before the tenth planet. This sounds like something far smaller. Our moon is a fairly small rock compared to the size of uh, Planet X or Nibiru. Uh, so I'm, I'm I'm a bit confused on that. Uh, I have been told also that Nibiru or the tenth planet has a debris field about a quarter million miles wide, which would put us well within the debris field if it's coming that close. Well, you know, John, I, I, I have to be honest here. In, there's, I don't know what I don't know, and I'm having a hard time discerning what is real information from what is disinformation. Right, right. Because that, that's one of the things that, that um, the powers that be will do, is they will give you bits of information information but they'll also give you bits of disinformation right and so it, it's up to us to use our our own discernment to try to determine hey what's real and and, and what's bunk and uh, i I'm, I'm struggling with this i, I have I to agree, be very agree. Honest. well i uh, the quant and i've described this live on the air i know you typically don't listen to my show because you're trying to get ready for your own mic but typically what i do with this is uh, first of all i describe the quandary that I find myself in, and I think you find yourself in also. We come across information like this uh, from reliable sources that don't know each other. If it's true and we don't report it, then we could be directly responsible for a lot of lives being lost. If it's not true and we report it, well, then we get some egg on our face and life goes on. Uh, what I'm doing, uh, Mike, is encouraging people to look at these dates as a uh, opportunity for a training uh, opportunity for us to evaluate our prudent preparedness, uh, develop a plan A, a plan B, maybe even a plan C, uh, to be able to evacuate if we live on a coastal area and be able to have a safe haven to go to. Uh, the dates of August 17th and September 26th may or may not be the accurate dates on one hand. On the other, 
the scientists I work with, and I work with a number of scientists, uh, they're all in agreement that, yes, this thing's coming. And when it does come, it's going to cause massive flooding on all coastal areas. As you probably know, Mike, I've debriefed about two dozen Navy veterans who were at the classified briefings, telling them that during their lifetime, this coastal flooding would occur. So I agree with you. It's a quandary. Uh, it's something that we need to encourage people to, to do their own research, to uh, achieve their own level of discernment, and make decisions based on the knowledge that they gain. Well, well John, if worse comes to worse, it may be a good time to take the family on a camping trip and just be a, away from any large urban areas at all because if, if something of, of this magnitude occurs, there's going to be mass panic. And when that happens, uh, your freeways are going to be like parking lots and you're not going to be able to get away. You're going to be stuck where you are. Temperatures are going to flare. Uh, people are going to become desperate. And it, it, it might not be a bad time to uh, take advantage of um, you know, a national park somewhere, take the family out camping, be prepared, take as much stuff as, as you can um, you know, that, that's, that's useful, utilita uh, utilitarian to you, and, and just be somewhere else. If, if you've got yourself a, a cabin or a vacation home or you own rural property someplace, then uh, better yet, you know, it, it's, uh, you might, I guess you, do, you may just want to be out of the cities. Well, and um, you're right. It, you know, turn it into an enjoyable occasion, like you said, uh, a training exercise, if you will, so that you know you you at least minimize the risk and you don't get yourself caught up in uh, a massive urban uh, uh, situation. You know, where where you're you're sitting on a freeway and you can't move because it's bumper to bumper and the cars around you are running out of gas because they've been sitting there for ten hours idling. Right. Well, I, I, I've talked occasionally, I did recently, about the aerial photograph of Houston and Texas when people were trying to evacuate when that the hurricane was headed that way. I, I counted the lanes up that weren't moving all in one direction. I think it was 12 or 14 lanes, uh, interstate highway and, and outer roads. It was amazing, an amazing, very scary photograph. Mike, we got a caller here, James from Fort Worth. Good morning, James. Hey, guys. How are you all doing? Good. Um, I, I was wondering, is there anything to be looking for uh, through other organizations, maybe the Navy around their uh, naval bases in Norfolk and so other places, like uh, just a sign that they're, like, moving everything out, you know, getting it away from the shores? I was wondering if there's anything uh, uh, along those lines that maybe we could look for to give us a little bit of a heads up. James, uh, the Office of Naval Intelligence, ONI, uh, have been evacuating their people from coastal areas for a while. The CIA and National Security Agency began in 2005 to evacuate their people to Denver. So uh, there's not much you're going to see because all the um, people who are part of continuity of government, the majority of them anyway, have already left the coastal areas. <laughs> Yeah, that, well, I've got a sister over there, and that's uh, I, she's in North Carolina, and so I was just wanting to, uh, because is I've been east watching... Or west, is, she, is your sister east or west of the Blue Ridge Parkway? Uh, she's east, and... Um, uh, well, the U.S. Navy, James, the U.S. Navy, not John Moore, the U.S. Navy says the East Coast will take damage up to the Blue Ridge Parkway, which is 100 miles from the ocean. Yeah, yeah, she, she lives, well, she's literally right on the beach. She's got beach Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Um, so I, I wanted to get some information to her because I've, you know, this uh, subject piqued my interest years ago, and I've been really keeping up with it. And you know, thanks to you, uh, I've learned a whole lot. So uh, okay. Thanks to both you. Thanks to both you and Mike. Okay, James. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, bye bye. We, uh, Mike, we got another caller here. Dennis in Michigan. Good morning, Dennis. Good morning, uh, John and Mike. Um, I notice uh, I, I have a, a comment and, and another comment after that. Uh, I notice that the dates between August 17th and September 26th is, is, is exactly 40 days and 40 nights. 40 nights. 40 nights. 40 nights. 